on your Jump, 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 jump. What we don't start it. Look at what we don't start it. This the people party. What's up, party people? It's Talib Kweli. This is the People's Party. We are partying with the people. The people are the party. I got my lovely and talented homegirl, Jasmine Lee, in the motherfucking house. Hey! Make some noise with Jasmine Lee! How you doing, Jasmine? Oh, I am so excited for this interview. <laughs> you seem excited. Oh, I am. Your shoes are excited and they can't even see them. FAMU colors, baby. FAMU? You went to FAMU? I sure did. Our next guest also went to FAMU. Somebody who inspires me a lot on the activism side of things. The founder of, one of the founders of Dream Defenders, uh, activist and a trailblazer, a supporter of the culture, a man who gets out on the streets. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just stay on social media, he gets out on the streets. I know, because I've seen him out there Down on these streets. Word is bond. Give it up for Phil Agnew in the place today. Yeah! Oh, Phil you! Damn you. All right, all right, all right. That's our gang song. I feel left out. Sorry. <laughs> I should have told you. You can go back. <laughs> Common, Common went for a little while. Uh, Dead Prez met at FAMU. Yep. Um, what is it about that school that brings that sort of... Co and you, you've you started Dream Defenders at FAMU. While you were FAMU? After. After. Right after. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it about that school that, that's creating all this wonderful energy? You know, for me... I never was supposed to go to college. Okay. So I grew up in Chicago, didn't ever think I would go to college. My mm -hmm. church raised money for me to go to school. Oh, wow. shit. And from the point I was there, what I always say, it took me from the mud, made me mm. the clay, and mm. made me who I am today. It, mm. is, it is a school that if I didn't go to that school, I don't know if I would have made it through any college. Mm -hmm. But it was the one that took me. I, I can't explain it. The first mm -hmm. moments you're there, you're like, oh, this is where I'm supposed, supposed to be. Right. Yeah, this is, this is. You know, this is home. And I had never even left. I had left Chicago maybe two or three times. Mm. So for me to go somewhere, completely remove culture shock, mm -hmm. they dance in Florida like you never yeah. did. Right. You know, it's, everything is different. And to go there and to be like, okay, I can survive here. Mm -hmm. I can make it here. I can flourish here. That's what fam you do. That's what HBCUs do. That's right. That's what they do. That's why it's called family. Family, like you go there and you make family. Like I have lifelong friends from that school. It teaches you how to look fly yep. and be about your business yep. because it's not either or. You got to look the part and act the part. It tells you about time management. It's, yes. it's, it's persistence. Like persistence. Because we was on paper when I was there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, you, it was no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep going till I get that yes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I wore a suit. I wore a suit every day. Right. You know, I because I was in business day. school. Mm -hmm. But it was, it, it told you, it, it made you into the total package. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all great. Right. But fam, you made me. Man, that's beautiful. The, the experience of going to HBCUs, yep. like um, the, the students that come from these schools are exceptionally successful. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you know, do you agree with what Jamel Hill said about athletes? And HBCUs that yep. athletes should be going, black athletes should be trying to get to HBCUs. Well, yeah, you got to look at the history of HBCUs. Mm -hmm. They were the only institutions we used to be able to go to. Mm -hmm. Fam, you won a national championship early right. in the in the century. And it's important to know it's not yeah. for people who watch this show. Right. Uh, you could be white and go to HBCU. Can, everybody is welcome to go right. to HBCU. It's not, it's not segregation. Right. It's called historically black college and university. <laughs> right. You can yeah. rate your doors out. I mean, I'm we just saying, like, can we have too. something? We're going to gentrify the HBCUs? No, no, I mean, well, the thing is, is that segregation is, they, they, this country works against segregation. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like segregation, me personally, I'm not a fan of segregation. Yeah. I understand that our community has suffered under integration because of white supremacy, because mm -hmm. of how pervasive white supremacy is, is that once we integrate into their systems, their systems are designed to not be fair for us, and there are resources that have left our communities, but that doesn't mean we should be out here caping for segregation. Okay, because I have, I have mixed views on it, because oh, like, yes, I want the world to be together, I want the world to be a better place, and no, HBCUs are not just for black people, mm -hmm. but it's like, I don't encourage other races <laughs> to go to HBCUs, <laughs> because that's right. our safe place, like that's mm -hmm. somewhere where it's for us, by mm -hmm. us, we learn about us, we learn about our culture, it's like a safe space, like the debates you can have mm -hmm. there, like the conversation, the classes we have like you're not you're not gonna get that when you go to a white school so mm -hmm. you know I don't say yeah white people go to family I'm not gonna say you know you're right. banned or whatever but uh, I, I understand I think it, your feelings are valid if yeah. you go you have to understand the history of the institution mm -hmm. right 
these were places that black people, they, they were the only places black people oh, wow. could go mm -hmm. to go to school. That, that was how they were founded. Mm -hmm. And then during the civil rights movement, these were the only places where black people could run to when the Klan mm -hmm. was running mm -hmm. up on you in, in Jackson, Mississippi, or mm -hmm. in Tallahassee, Florida. Mm -hmm. And so right. these institutions protect us right. in a lot of ways. Right. And it may not seem as brutal now as burning crosses in your front lawn, mm -hmm. But in the world that we live in with covert racism, with the way the institutions are built, mm -hmm. black colleges represent the only place where you can go, you can feel safe, mm -hmm. you can get that quality education. A lot of people, you sleep on it, but you go to black, you go to a high school or elementary school in any city. I went mm -hmm. grew up in Chicago. During Black History Month, you learned about Rosa, Malcolm, right. Martin, that dude with the fur on that went to the <laughs> North Pole. <laughs> right, Matthew uh, right, Matthew right, right, right. Carter G. Woodson, right? right? You're learning a about nigga a, went to the North Pole. Yeah. The, the fur on. Yeah, the fur on. But, but you learn about those people, but right. you go to HBCU and you get a consciousness opened up, mm -hmm. right? Something that you can never close up. You see things you can't unsee. Right. And so um, if you go, just know that's what you're getting. You're not right. going to transform that institution. No, no more that I'm going to change Notre Dame by going there. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you were a pharmaceutical rep. I at was. Some point, I was. And you got frustrated with that yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, from what I could tell, um, looking into your past, you were inspired by Occupy Wall Street. Yeah, I um, was. As was I. Yep. You know, I went to Occupy Wall Street all over the country. Yep. Um, and that was something that I, I liked. Yeah, you the, get big ups for that. A lot oh, of no, people I, weren't doing it. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, you know it, was, it, just, it, it was easy for me to go to New York. But because I'm privileged as an artist to travel the world, and mm -hmm. Occupy was, I went to Occupy Wall Street in Anchorage, Alaska, yeah. where it was oh, like wow. five degrees outside. Wow. It was like and three that's people. That's activism. Yeah, yeah, three yeah, people. yeah, 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 yeah. But they was like, nah, we, 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 we are, occupying. We occupying. Yeah, this iceberg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Us three. Yeah. And I was up there like, I had a show in Anchorage that, that yeah. day. You know what I'm wow. saying? Um, but I like the way that they changed the paradigm because, you know, um, they taught us about leaderless movements. Yep. And, um, they, it seemed like they took the inspiration from the, the situations that were going on in the Middle East, like the uh, the, uh, the Green Arab Movement, Spring. the Arab yeah, yeah, Spring, yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that. Um, oh, and so there's, there's, there's a direct line from Arab Spring to Occupy to Trayvon Martin. Yeah. yeah. And and the work that, that you did around that and, and Dream Defenders. Mm -hmm. um, what's the importance, how important is it to not just study movements that are happening in your community, but to study movements that are happening all over. They laid a blueprint, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think Occupy was was a little bit before Arab Spring, but okay. there, there was a there was a lineage there. They lay a blueprint mm -hmm. for us. They, in many ways, went through the same things that we went through, but were able to build over those obstacles and the mm -hmm. stuff you can learn from it. You mm -hmm. can't apply everything from. We can't keep doing everything they did in the Civil Rights Movement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because what they did in the Civil Rights Movement was bold, mm -hmm. was crazy. What we're doing now, if we're just trying to emulate what they did, it's not so bold. It's not ah. so crazy. They've already planned for it. Right. But for me, it's important because in that are the little nuggets mm -hmm. that you can use when you come up against an obstacle, mm -hmm. when you come up against ego, when you come up against um, opposition from the police, when you come up against um, somebody who's seeking to tear your organization down from the inside. Mm -hmm. There's always a way that you can learn from a previous movement. Look, for me, I started at FAMU. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the reason I keep bringing it up is because while I was at FAMU, we were celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Tallahassee bus boycott. Mm -hmm. Right. That preceded the bus boycotts that we saw around the country. Right. And it was FAMU students who were uh, desegregating the public transportation in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. And so I was there when we had people from uh, 50 years ago come to the campus. Mm -hmm to talk about what they had done. Mm -hmm. And so for me, sitting at their feet, I never had a problem. I never, there's a lot of people that got a problem with sitting at old heads' feet, listening to them ramble on. I could do that for hours, mm -hmm. right? Because what they do is paint a picture of what we're gonna see, mm -hmm. right? And it may not be the direct line of what we're talking about, right. but, but they can start to paint a picture for what they did when they were confronted. And history is like, one of my favorite quotes is, the one thing we learn from history is that we do not learn from history, oh. right? right? And so, Every time I'm able to sit at the feet of somebody, I'm able to soak in and learn. And then when you see something, it may look a little bit different, but a lot of times it's always the same. Because right. our opposition has always been the same. It's global capital, right. it's racism, it's right. white supremacy. It's always been the same. They got a different little mask on, but right. it's the same. Now, me as an artist, um, I met you because I had an album called Prisoner Conscious. Mm -hmm. I've been known as a conscious artist. Uh, I've lent my name to activism, fundraising, doing concerts and stuff that's easy for me to do because already in my wheelhouse. Yep. I'm already performing. It's not outside of my 
it's not I'm not doing anything extra to do activism work. Right. Um, and I'm getting a lot of props for it. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout my career, it's part of my legacy, mm -hmm. right? And um, I, but doing Prisoner Conscious, I knew that I, I, at a certain point making an album, I felt like I can't put out an album for sale with this record company is with a barcode on it right. called Prisoner of Conscious, and I'm not in touch with actual prisoners of conscious. Yep. So I started working more with um, Monifa and Lumumba, oh, yeah, ben, Bandele, the Bandeles, yes. yeah. um, because they, for the Malcolm X grassroots movement, yep. they've Shout always been, MXGM. yeah, they've always been uh, in the forefront of doing political education, not just having us show up at f fundraisers, but mm -hmm. by like, look, this is the, this is the cause, mm -hmm. this is what we on, let's get on code, yep. I'm gonna give you the information, yep. so that when people ask you what it is you're participating in, you know what it is. Um, so I went to them, and I went to Rosa Clemente, yep. and I went to, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Harry Belafonte, yes. you know what I'm saying, yeah. and I was invited to this meeting that Harry Belafonte had, and it was myself and Knife Wonder, David Banner, right, yep. right, uh, yeah. Chuck D, Most Def was on the phone, Jamie Foxx was on the phone, yep. uh, 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 the sister Rosario Dawson, her mom's, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it was a beautiful situation, and I asked Harry Belafonte, I said, you know, give me the blueprint. Like, I don't remember the exact question I asked him, mm -hmm. but he was like, look, I'm in my 80s, you need to go holler at Phil Agnew. Right. That's what the man said to me. Mm -hmm. and I was like, who's that? He was like, Dream Defenders. Mm -hmm. I was like, I never heard of him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was like, you need to get down to Florida. I remember. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and start I fucking with me on the phone with you. Yeah. 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 And so Harry Belafonte started his career. He was the first platinum artist of ever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With right. the with the de Deo. They a, a song everybody danced to, but don't know what it's really about. That's right. Right. It's about people on the plantation. That's right. Right. They like come in and want to go home. That's right. Right? It sounds so good. It sounds that's the magic of artists. Mm -hmm. And I, I gotta give you your, your your props right now because the people have forgotten what art is about. Mm. Our, our, what I consider my mentor, I think you may consider him a mentor too, Mr. B. That's right. He talks about Paul Robeson. That's right. Right? Paul Robeson, if you don't know who Paul Robeson is, mm -hmm. right? One of the first black all Americans. Listen that was to a his Paul speeches. Robeson scholar right here, uh, Daniel. Really? Shout Come out. On. Yes. Listen, <laughs> listen to his speeches on YouTube. They, yes. they, they there for you to listen to yes. when he's defending himself in Congress. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. It's epic. They blackballed this yeah. man. Yeah. And he was a and he lesbian, was, he was oh, a singer, multiple he was killing languages. Him. Yeah. Killing him. He 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 redefined the whole he redefined what it was to be a black person in the mm -hmm. United States mm -hmm. for the world. Oh, right? he, was him in the car. That's, he was that's, a statesman. That's we were listening to that speech yeah. mm -hmm. on the way back from here. Yeah. Yep. So so this brother is an icon and he's an icon because he's an artist, but that understood his role in the world. Mm -hmm. And artists see the world differently. Mm -hmm. They make us feel things, they make us happy, they make us sad, they make us angry, they make mm -hmm. us ready to march, they make us want to dance, they make us want to make love. Mm -hmm. And artists have a power over people that a lot of artists are selling just mm -hmm. to sell records. Right. right. To sell shoes, to sell right. shirts. And so what what he represented to us and what you represent is that reclamation of what art is. He said artists are the gatekeepers to truth. No doubt. And so you coming down, I remember, I still remember to the day I was on the phone. I'm looking at my phone. I can't mm -hmm. believe this moment that I'm in because you're calling and we're in the Capitol mm -hmm. and you coming down. And that moment was transformational and what it did is it accelerated our growth mm -hmm. because you're able to tell a story, right? And then for you to come down, show up, bring your son. Shout right, out to Manny stayed, Fela. Yeah, who stayed involved, right? right? He stayed in Florida for a little while. That's right. And so what you brought, see, we, we, we were occupying the state capitol and it's ebbs and flows, it's ups and right. downs, it's times where we're like, oh, we could take over the world, it's times right. where we're like- I went down there and slept, slept in the state capitol yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's times where we're like, this, this, the whole world is ours. Mm -hmm. And then it's times where you're like, what the fuck are we doing? This is the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. what are we gonna get? And so having somebody like you come down there and amplify it, freestyle for a few hours, mm -hmm. right? Really grew that, that thing. And so when people ask, how do you go from a moment to a movement, I always say you need art. That's right. You need art to be that, so, that lubricant through that hard time after you have a moment, you think the world is in your hands and mm -hmm. then it all crumbles. The revolution don't come, which it rarely does. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I was was excited me about that moment was the the fact that it was about art that 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 we was y'all was involved in revolutionary tangible direct action mm -hmm. that got results yes right yeah and but at night when it was time to sleep in the capital no sleep there was no sleep it was we we turning on. TDE, yeah. that was cracking at the yeah, time, yeah, yeah, absolute yeah, yeah, yeah. terrorist threats. Oh. And y'all was jumping up and down Brown. like Danny yeah. Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and yeah. stuff that I was just now getting familiar with that yeah. at the time was representing more my son's generation. Yeah. But I'm yeah. like, okay, 
even if these artists are not wearing the pro blackness on their sleeve, yeah. like artists from my generation did, mm -hmm. like you know from the movies, like I'm black and I'm black and I'm yeah, black and I'm black. That's what we was doing. Like yeah. we we was we was just now fresh into the into it, like discovering ourselves. These artists, the Danny Browns, the J. Coles, the Kendricks, the Ab Souls, yep. they were they were redefining or defining what they self what it meant to, to be black. Yeah. And it didn't mean saying I'm an African and I'm black, yeah. but it meant it meant being like I'm not your idea of what a black man is. Mm -hmm. So the music, even if Danny Brown did not, and you know what, the, the lyrics to that song are pretty revolutionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But to see y'all jumping up and down to that terrorist threats, yep, yep, that was yep. revolutionary to me. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, the artists of today, you know, every generation, what I like to say is we are remembering the dismembered parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? From the time we were stolen from, from Africa, and I know mm -hmm. everybody started rolling their eyes when we started talking about Africa, mm -hmm. but from the time we were stolen from Africa, dropped off in Haiti, right, mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in uh, Saint Domingue, and on islands, and then dropped off mm -hmm. here, dropped off in Brazil, we have had our, our minds, our bodies, our souls, our cultures dismembered, mm -hmm. right? And so every generation is reclaiming or remembering a different part of ourselves. Garvey mm -hmm. did it, right? Mm -hmm. Garvey was reclaiming a part of our identity, a pride in being black, right? right? There was a civil rights movement. I'm skipping over a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot always is happening. Lot. But there was a civil rights movement that said, okay, we're going to reclaim our humanity mm -hmm. right now, right? There was a movement before ours that said, listen, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm going to wear my hair however mm -hmm. I want to wear. But now we're in a place where we're... Uh, reclaiming what it means to be a black person, mm -hmm. right? And not just in our humanity because white people have been done a disservice by white supremacy as well. Absolutely. It steals away their humanity. You can't cry. Mm -hmm. You got to always keep moving. You got to work yourself down to the bone if mm -hmm. you're not doing anything. And so black people and poor people, oppressed people in this country are now saying, you know what? I could be whatever I want to be. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. about me is fluid. This the way I am today. This the way I am tomorrow. This is my right. name today. I done changed my name and went back to my old <laughs> yeah, name. Yeah, it used to be Phil Agnew, Umi Salah. Yeah. Then Phil Agnew said, I'm not doing Animal. Yeah, I went back. And, <laughs> right. and so I think every part of this time is fluid. Mm -hmm. And that's the magic of what we have to do is as we start to de decolonize our mind and remember the dismember. Because where we came from, and th I don't romanticize Africa. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't because mm -hmm. that takes away what Africa truly is, is mm -hmm. complexity. That's right. But where we came from, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It has space for a whole lot absolutely. of different gray areas. It's a cradle of, civil cradle of civilization. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We lived in Most a Most resources way. in the world, all, all that. Yeah. Absolutely. So what I see now in the artist mm -hmm. is that it's not just in the shirt that you wear, it's woven into the tapestry of right. your songs. I say this all the time on here. Like, nowadays, this new generation, like, for instance, calling each other queens and kings, like as you say, like for each generation you start to do more and more, and that's yeah. the the joys of social media because when you see other black people bigging each other up and saying this is what you deserve or you can run your own businesses, it's like oh I can do it too. So yep. that's like it's a chain reaction. It is. Um, you're from Chicago. Yep. Son of a preacher. I am. And I'm a, a son of a preacher. I mean, a oh, daughter of a preacher. Oh, many generations. Yeah. <laughs> you can be whatever you want. You can I be know. the son. I know. I know. I know. I'm not we a flew son. It. I promise. I promise. <laughs> right, right, right. You um, gonna blow your parents' mind, right? Right. Now. right yeah, like, I like, have what? a son. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about Chicago used as a um, political football when they talk when they compare so-called black-on-black crime to white supremacy? Yeah. Listen, um, Chicago. Chicago is an interesting case. Chicago is a lot like a lot of cities across this country mm -hmm. that they ran the same model. Mm -hmm. So Baltimore, what they did Detroit, is Detroit. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Flint. Uh, yeah. Let's start talking. Dayton, Tol Youngstown, Tol Tol Cleveland, Tol Cincinnati, yeah. Trenton, Newark. Mm -hmm. This is what Newark, it is. Oh. The, these Newark cities. Is scary, man. Yeah. Well, these cities. Camden, New Jersey. Yeah. And you go to Detroit, and a lot of it has been. Listen, capital left these cities. Yeah. Right. So run, the job, by, right. what created some sort of substantive living for, for people mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so what happened is the government already been documented, shipped in some crack. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the new structure by which you build your community. Let's take Chicago, for instance. They murder a 21 year old man named Fred Hampton. Right. Mm -hmm. Who was bringing together Black Panthers, young lords, um, w poor white people in the city mm -hmm. and bringing them together in what was the original Rainbow Coalition. Right. right. Now it's been 
you know, use right. uh, for other purposes. Buy another right? Chicago guy. Buy another Chicago one <laughs> or uh, uh, Chicago import, right? Okay, okay. And so this was a building, the P Stone Rangers, mm -hmm. the gangs were providing a structure, mm -hmm. right? And so then what happens, you bring in drugs, you mm -hmm. eradicate the infrastructure of a community, mm -hmm. and then you go in and send the police and kill all the leaders. Mm -hmm. Take all the leaders and put them in jail. Mm -hmm. Then what you do is say, all of y'all that used to live in Cabrini Green, y'all living over here now, mm -hmm. right? And so this is a systematic thing. This is not something like, how does Chicago get so violent? Mm -hmm. First off, Chicago always been violent. It wasn't always black people killing each other. Right. When Al I went, Capone was running them When streets. I went to the Sears Tower, yes. you go to the top of the Sears Tower, they got pictures of, of, of Al Capone. Yes. And they got pictures of, what's the dude that Johnny Depp played in the movie? Um, the dude from Blow? <laughs> you know, not the dude from Blow, but the, the gangster from Chicago. Um, the white boy. I'm anyway, forbidden. it's white gangsters yeah, yeah, that yeah, they got yeah. their pictures up because they understand that they built that city. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this, this, one, Chicago is one of the most organized cities. Mm -hmm. When you talk about labor, um, Saul Alinsky. Dillinger. Yeah. Oh, Dillinger. Yeah. Right. So when you take away the infrastructure of a city, mm -hmm. of a people, right, this is systematic. When you do one plus one plus one plus one, you can sit down and be like, yo, four about to happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you can see how people are killing each other. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no schools, mm -hmm. there's no community centers, there's no courts, there's no fields. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do all day? It's nothing but dope and guns, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, get, I get mad when they talk about the brutality of Chicago because it is brutal. We shouldn't be killing each other. Mm -hmm. But I would say these young people who are doing what they're doing to survive and, and carve out a little place for themselves in Chicago, who don't got no guidance, who don't got no opportunity, who don't know anything else, mm -hmm. They're talked about as the worst people on earth. That's right. But when you talk about a businessman like Bezos or whatever, who right. take away jobs from 300,000 people, mm. Walmart, who, right. who bankrupts a whole city and destroys a whole city, mm. leaves them to the opiates. We don't talk about the murder and destruction that they reap on, up, upon the world. Mm -hmm. And so Chicago is an example of what happens when a system decides to abandon a city. Mm. You take away the money, you take away the resources, you take away community centers, you take away schools. What is going to happen? That's yeah. right. What is going to happen to kids when you stacked up on top of each other? Right. It's crazy because, like, um, I could have been a statistic. I grew up in the hood or whatever, and, like, my, I was a latchkey kid. I had tons of time. But the difference in Roosevelt, we had so many programs, and I just got picked for so many programs. Yep. I didn't have time to be on the street. It's a lot of my friends that were pregnant or in gangs or whatever. Yep. And it's like I didn't have time to do that because I always had something to do. And when you take away all of that art, it's like, oh, we're preparing you to go to jail because you, we're not giving mm. you nothing else to learn. What are you going to do? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, Chicago... It, it hurts me. I I'm, I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky. My mom, when we were little, four. I'm the oldest of four boys. Mm -hmm. Damn. She taught us always look people in the eye, mm -hmm. smile, um, speak politely, mm -hmm. right? And we learned certain things to be able to avoid certain pitfalls. Mm -hmm. Right. We had. I had my mom and my dad. Right. I had church. You right. in the world, but not of the world. Right. Right. I had all type of things that made me lucky. Mm -hmm. And I'm good at taking tests. Right. Right. So I got into a magnet school. Mm -hmm. My church that I played for, not my home church that I played drums for, mm -hmm. raised money for me to go to school. Mm -hmm. I was able to stay to school because I was involved. And, and you could finesse that fam. You real good. Oh, and right. I got in state. Right. I got in state. Right. You student body president. Yes. All I got, I got, you know, I'm smart. I'm talented, but I'm lucky. I'm right. the exception to the rule, not the rule. Right. You blessed, yeah. brother. Yes. We blessed. Highly um, favored. That's that's absolutely that's Britain. right. Britain. You're not lucky. It was meant for you to be yes. able to go over all those things so that you can help other people. And especially you coming from that same area, you'll understand them more and they'll understand you more to be able to listen. Yeah. 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 Um, you and um, uh, Aja Monet mm -hmm. have a very spe special relationship. Yep. Um, it's a beautiful relationship. Yep. Um, but beyond the beauty of y'all relationship, that's, that's none of our business. Mm -hmm. You also have a beautiful activist and community a relationship with the community. Yeah. yeah and what y'all yeah. trying to build. Um, Y'all famously confronted Spike Lee about oh, his portrayal of Chicago. We're gonna go there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the okay. People's party. Now it's a party. Okay. <laughs> okay. Party. Now I'm, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. You know, and I grew up with Spike Lee. And Brooklyn, the, um, the the white neighborhood in New York. That's right. That's okay, right. Cool. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> You've seen the show with with the girl from HBO, yeah, Lena yeah, Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Brooklyn. I did watch Damn that show. Right, 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 right. Too, right, right. Um, no, but you know, Spike Lee. Um, obviously, I'm I'm literally on a song by Sky Zoo. Shout out to Sky Zoo. Yeah. I'm literally on a song called. Spike Spike Lee is my hero. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so I 
I'm a huge Spike Lee fan. Yeah. I reserve my judgment. Y'all went at Spike Lee hard yeah, before yeah, yeah. Shaw Rat came out. Yes, we did. Right? Yeah. I yeah. reserve my judgment. Okay. I saw y'all going hard. I was like, ooh, yeah. my nigga's going hard. <laughs> and 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 Asian like uh, Aja, yeah. excuse me, Aja. I know her before. I'm, I know her before I know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, of um, course. So Aja, just as a writer mm -hmm. and as an activist, is one of my favorite people on the planet. Oh wow! So when well, y'all looked linked up, it was like Voltron. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. like when I seen y'all, like I fuck with Spike Lee. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But y'all my niggas. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I seen y'all. He was doing like a, a press or something. Uh huh. Y'all stepped I up. I'm like, gonna tell you how I have it. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. I was watching that shit. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, I'm, I want to hear it happen, but yeah. I reserved my judgment until I seen the movie. Yeah, because I'm like, it. yeah, I saw the movie. Yeah, Nick Cannon. Shout Wesley out to Nick Snipes. Cannon. We were just talking to Nick yeah, Cannon. Yeah, multi talent. Yeah, yeah, very talented. Um, a lot of talented people involved in Dave Chappelle's yeah, in that yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Vic, Vic was in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did not enjoy that movie. Right. I did. I did not enjoy it. I just love it. how he shouted everyone out first, like, such <laughs> yeah, and such. Yeah. And yeah. That I, I did yeah. not enjoy that movie. And I'd be willing to bet that there's people involved in the movie that also did not enjoy it. I, I know some people. You know? Yeah. So that doesn't, for me at all, take anything away from Spike Lee. Okay. Um, but please break down what your issue with the movie was. Right. And I got to say, when I went to see the movie, I was like, eh, maybe feeling them got a point. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So let me right. tell you, people right. think we went at them. Mm -hmm. We went to the film screening. So for background, he was in Miami, where mm -hmm. we live now, mm -hmm. um, to do a screening of the film. He was, he was showing mm -hmm. the first 15 minutes, or like a 15-minute right, right, trailer right, right, right. for the film. I went excited about the movie. Mm -hmm. Swear to God. Mm -hmm. I was very excited because I saw when the levees broke. Mm -hmm. I saw how he handled. Right. A, he a has incredible films like that. Yeah. Four little girls. Oh my there's, god. There's films that spike like uh, 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 the Million Man March. Get on the bus. Get on the bus. Yeah. Malcolm. Right. <coughs> right. I saw how he handled not with kid gloves, but he handled uh, a very hurtful situation gracefully, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he cradled it and he brought emotion to it. Mm -hmm. And then this dude decided to go Shakespearean. Mm -hmm. On a personal a Greek experience, tragedy. a Greek tragedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. an obscure one. Yeah, in my opinion, I ain't learned about it in public school. I didn't either. <laughs> okay. And the idea of women holding sex—that's kind of withholding sex. That's to, a little. To, to, yeah. So I have not. I've yet to see the final. Mm -hmm. I've not yet to see. I've whatever. watched it. I've watched the whole whole movie. Okay. I didn't. I didn't see it. So I, I should. I should caveat it with that. Mm -hmm. But let me say this. I went to the film, and, and if you listen to the recording, I didn't go to ambush him. Mm -hmm. I asked him, what was his purpose mm -hmm. for the film? Mm -hmm. And he said, I already told you. Yeah, he, he got defensive immediately. He got defensive right. immediately. He, he, I don't think he, I, I Spike, at this point in his career, the activism and how people approach things is different. Like you right. said, we're not doing the same thing as civil rights. Bro, can I give you some history real mm -hmm. quick? Mm -hmm. Not different. Mm -hmm. You got to look at the articles of when he put out Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. How Amiri Baraka was going at it. Oh yeah, he ass. was. He was. You he absolutely was going right. at that ass. He, he was absolutely like, yo, was. this middle class and, uh, motherfucker. Amiri, Amiri knew Malcolm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He said this motherfucker should not go nowhere near Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Right. And then he delivered Denzel, and he delivered an yeah. incredible film. They absolutely did. Um, and was able to silence the critics mm -hmm. at that time. But this isn't the first time that people have been like Spike. No, but people have on, said things about him with yeah. his relationship with women on film. Oh, yes. There's been a lot of criticism. And, yeah, and I think it still continues. What I'll say is the film did not treat the trauma and the disaster that is mm -hmm. Chicago, but not because black people are in Chicago, but because the city, how it's run. Mm -hmm. he, it didn't depict that. It glossed over it. Mm -hmm. It made a farce of it. And it wasn't funny, mm -hmm. right? And I don't think Spike, I went, I asked my question. I didn't go at him. I asked the question because I was expecting from a highly heralded and rightfully acclaimed director mm -hmm. of the black canon mm -hmm. to treat one of the modern day black mm -hmm. disasters with the level of respect and reverence and with teaching. Right. Because white people see Spike Lee and they say, what Spike said, black. that, is, that is fact. Yeah. And he went in there and made a fool of it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and no disrespect to the actors, but I'm looking right. at it and I just didn't see how you could find comedy in it. And I could find comedy in everything, yeah. but a film of comedy, right, about it, I just couldn't get it. And so for me, artists have a duty. I don't believe artists, we, I want to live in a world where Talib can rap about whatever he wants to rap about. Mm -hmm. He could rap about having fun, mm -hmm. painting, doing whatever. That's not the world we live in. That's not mm -hmm. the world you live in. Mm -hmm. 
And if you become a rapper that only raps out about the world that you live in now in Calabasas, mm -hmm. Not you specifically, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I've been to Calabasas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but then you are divorced from the people that 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 raised you, yeah. and so you deserve to have people be like, "Yo, I love your music today," mm -hmm. but it, it's a uh, it's bop, it's a bop. That's right. what it is. Um, uh, going back to Dream Defenders a little bit. Um, and I know that you left Dream Defenders to travel more a year ago. A year yeah, ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um. To sort of you, the, the the language I've I've seen online is to get out of the movement bubble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that about? We all build our own universes, mm -hmm. and I build my own. Mm -hmm. I posted something yesterday. I'm new to I'm new I'm old and new to Twitter, mm -hmm. but I posted something yesterday. I'm gonna quote myself. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between being very principled and just being a hater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found myself a little bit becoming a little bit of a hater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I was in my yeah 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 introspection. I, I became I was in a bubble mm -hmm. a little bit like I wasn't talking to people that agreed with me all mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. but I knew the motherfuckers that disagreed with me. I had them pegged, and mm -hmm. you was my nigga in the group that disagreed. Right, like, we're a group. Mm -hmm. You the disagree one. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I wasn't able to move about as I would like to. Right, and um, I wanted that opportunity. I, I if if I whatever I die, I want to be known as a teacher. Right. Mm -hmm. You and a teacher is a listener. Message. Yeah, that's what I want to be. And right. so for me, I left because I'm 34, mm -hmm. and it's 17, 18, 19 year olds is ready to run the organization. Oh, There's so two women that the, are running it. Important to the youth. Yes, they're yeah. killing it. They're yeah. they're better ostensibly than ever with me there. Right. That's very um forward thinking of you. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion, I'm on a. It's a gift and a curse because I'm on a journey. I don't even know where it goes, but I know I have a purpose in my life, and I'm mm -hmm. blindless. I'm blind. I'm like kind of going. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, man. I'm not this whiskey. You know, I'll cry, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll start crying. Yeah, right? Is that right? Yeah, damn, it's, but um, I don't know fully where I'm going, mm -hmm. but I'm very restless. Right. And I knew I wasn't serving my purpose fully in that in that place. What one more thing about Dream Defenders? What I like about Dream Defenders, on top of the social eco economic focus, yes, and the focus on direct action activism, yep. grassroots activism, yep. um, is the black and brown unity. Oh yes. Um, very important. Like, and you know, we're, we're in Los Angeles, and black and brown unity, like the term black and brown forever, that's a Los Angeles thing because they need that unity out here yeah. a little bit more than they need in other places, yeah. in my opinion. Right. But you, I was out there in Florida, yep. and as soon as I got to to Tallahassee, yep. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that was up front, and even you and me, we we met in Tallahassee, but we linked up again in Ferguson. Yes, I remember. Right yep, when yep. when Mike Brown was murdered. Yep. And um, with Rosa, yeah, with Rosa Jessica Clemente, Caramore, Jessica Tef Caramore, Tef Poe, I just like shout Tef them out. Poe and yeah. Tori Russell, and, yeah, you know everybody. Um, you know, but that, the the black and brown unity was also a focus there. Yes. Speak on that a little bit. I'm, I'm, we're living in Miami, mm -hmm. so in a lot of ways, um, there are similarities. We have a different right. brown, yeah, it is. Right, we have a different brown. We have a different black. Mm -hmm. Listen, the groups that we look up to, including and especially the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. I, I consider myself a Black Panther historian a little okay. bit. I, I've grown beyond romanticizing them. I have a, right. I, I got to brag a little bit. I have a Black Panther tattoo that I got me with too. Elaine Brown. Oh, I, I don't have right. that. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Let me fall back. <laughs> let me fall the fuck back. Right, right. I, I met <laughs> Elaine Brown. I used to have a bookstore in Kiru Books yeah. where she wrote Taste of Power. Yes. She came and did a book run and yes. she came to the bookstore. I got a picture with Elaine Brown, yeah. but not a tattoo. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've de we were able to develop a relationship. Mm. Shout out to Elaine Brown. Read yeah. Taste of Power if you haven't read that. You must. Cause, Taste cause of what, Power. Yeah, Taste, Taste of Power. power. Yeah. Because what she was able to do with the party um, is arguably as big, if not bigger, than what her and David Hillier were able yeah. to do with the party. But we can get on that. Mm -hmm. To the black and brown unity. If every black person in this country was aligned, we still wouldn't have enough people to do what we want to do, mm -hmm. which is radically transform this country economically, mm -hmm. politically, mm -hmm. socially, culturally. I agree with that. Right? What the Black Panthers were doing, what Fred Hampton was doing, they were they were uniting people across class and race and gender, mm -hmm. right? And we've and, and in this generation, respectfully, we have we have altered the movement trajectory for for everybody. We we've added gender, sexuality mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that. We have to be able to organize across class and race. Do you mm -hmm. know why? Because our opposition is organized across class That's and race. That's absolutely right. They are unified across. Capital is able to flow across the world. Mm -hmm. Capital is global, right? Mm -hmm. They unite the Chinese. They unite the Vietnamese. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're all united 
in support of capitalism, but they are all under the their foot is under the their neck is under the foot of capital, right? Right. So if our opposition is has recognized that there is a need for us all to be on the same page, or for them mm -hmm. to be on the all the same page, and their number one goal rhetorically, mm -hmm. institutionally, geographically, is to divide us up. Mm -hmm. One of the most radical things that we can do is find ourselves in another person that doesn't look like us. Right. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm not going to allow, we're not going to allow ourselves to invest in an organization that doesn't respect that there are differences and acknowledge that there are differences, but find similarities. Mm -hmm. And if you can't find anything, language, mm -hmm. food, dance, which we should be able to find a lot mm -hmm. in all of those, then we have a common enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our common energy, our, our common en enemy is global capital, racism, right. white supremacy, patriarchy, the thing that is taking away our soul, mm. taking away our body inside of our mind. I want to uh, talk a little bit about the, the perks of social media, because as we were talking <laughs> about outside, uh, some years ago, I was on social media and I saw that you had gotten arrested in Miami for protesting. Yep. And I, I was sitting as he at, does. Right. I was sitting at work like in a stupid argument with my mom and I was like you know what I'm over here stressing about my mom Philip's out there marching I'm gonna go out there and march too and I went and I marched and I got arrested mom and, this uh, is that don't, don't it's blame your fault. me it's your fault. I was in jail for 16 hours yeah yeah but oh, shit. uh yeah, 16 hours. It was on a weekend? It was a week? It was Thanksgiving. Oh, it was okay. the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. The Tuesday we know you're not supposed to the... protest on Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, listen, yeah. man. They you're were not sure. supposed to protest on Thanksgiving, and you're not supposed to protest in wedges. Yeah. You know this. I did both. I had on silver <laughs> and wedge sneakers. And this is uh, the thing. Wrong. I was a <laughs> I was a G to that gave me that Thanksgiving food. It yeah. was like... The prison uh, Thanksgiving yeah, food? I don't know what the heck that mashed potatoes was made of. Yeah. And oh, yeah, man. Okay. The, 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 a block stuffing and... and, and Turkey, but I digress. Uh, where has social media today failed, and where is it uh, best served? I mean, I, I'm a I'm a very reflective person. Social media has been successful mm -hmm. in highlighting organizations or people who are doing extraordinary things mm -hmm. or doing normal things extraordinarily. Ah. I, I am one of those people. Without social media, I don't know if I would have been lucky enough to be able to mm -hmm. get on the radar of certain people. Yeah, Dream right? Defenders have benefited from social media. Absolutely, actually, yeah. absolutely. Social media is responsible for the rise of Black Lives Matter in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. That's right, right. that's right. Um, I like it to be different, but at the end of the day, they are the microphone. Mm -hmm. I'm still the voice. We are still the voice but it is a microphone that amplifies. So social media is an amplification. Mm -hmm. It's a way to find connection with people. Where it has failed is people believe that social media is a community. Mm -hmm. Social media is an empathy engine, right? Mm -hmm. I would actually, I actually believe different. In 2005, the true story in 2005 was the first time I saw somebody get murdered. Mm -hmm. I had seen other things. We've seen Rodney King. I grew up in West Inglewood. I've seen people get stabbed. But the first time I saw somebody get murdered was in 2005, a young man named Martin Lee Anderson who was murdered right. at a boot camp. He's that 14 years old. 14 years old. Right. That affected me. Mm -hmm. I was like, this wrong. Right. They, like, How yeah. old were you at the time? I was 21. Mm -hmm. 20, 21. I was like, this can't happen. Mm -hmm. Now, we could scroll past a baby, you know, mm -hmm. face down on uh, the beach. Oh, I seen that one. Hey, did you, see that? did you see that video of that girl mm -hmm. that was shot? Ah. It's a yeah, I've seen that. Thing. I've seen that shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, you saw? Did you you seen that um homeless man get beat up? I right. seen that shit. That shit crazy. Today right? I showed you the Richard Spencer thing. Right. And it's like we we chuckled. Yeah. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But what he's saying is very very evil. Yes. But we chuckled because it's like, yeah, we. There's a distance. Yeah. It's something called um, the diffusion of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the more people, it, it is a sociological theory that came out of uh, Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. A woman named Kitty Genovese was murdered. Have you heard this story? No. Quickly. She was murdered by, she was murdered by, by a murderer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Sorry. most people right. are murdered by murderers. Murder. Right. She was murdered by a murderer. And uh, apparently there were like 30 people that heard and saw, like heard her screaming. Mm -hmm. Nobody called the police. Mm -hmm. And the sociologists were blown away, like, how could this happen in a neighborhood, a young white woman mm -hmm. killed? And one of the guys said, I just didn't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. So sociologists came in, and what they came up with is the diffusion of responsibility mm -hmm. that says the more people that see a bad thing happen, the less likely that any one of them is going to do something That's about it. That's interesting. That's so true. And it's so normalization. It's a normalization. And so you always assume you watch something, and you're like, Sean King going to do something. 
Right. Yeah. Dream Defender's gonna do something. Mm -hmm. NAACP, they definitely gonna get on this shit. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, my, my, my nigga over there, he gonna do, he always be on it. She always be on it. And so what I think is people that believe that social media is gonna support this movement are wrong because social mm -hmm. media is numbing people. Mm -hmm. And so in order to build a social movement, in order to build a corporation, mm -hmm. sell a product, you need empathy, you need feelings. Mm -hmm. You need feelings. And so for me, that's one of the shortcomings. It's like I'm able to connect with more people, but less deeply. Mm -hmm. The that's width of my thing is grown, but the depth mm -hmm. has atrophied. And I'm not able to, it's not, it's not sticking anymore. I'm on to the next one. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy because I had to catch myself today. I was, uh, or maybe yesterday, whatever. I was scrolling through on Instagram and I saw, uh, um, or Facebook, and I saw a missing persons thing. And it was like, it takes two seconds to share. And I'm just like, and I was like, wait, like it takes two seconds to share. And I scrolled back and shared mm -hmm. it. But it's like, I literally see missing people things every day. So right. it's like, I was just used to seeing it. And and not, not, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, 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 not to put you on the spot, but what was their name? You know, <laughs> well, like what they look like. You know what I'm saying? I These motherfuckers go. Like, yeah, but, I don't but her name. you know what I'm saying. I, that all I'm saying is she the went to ease. Clark Atlanta University. She oh. was last seen with her roommate. She's been missing since October 30th. Wait, actually, that was pretty good. Yeah, got, that got was the details down. <laughs> yeah, you she got it down. Like dark skin, and she had like a side part with a little flip hair, but I don't remember her name. Okay, my point Damn, is, detected. yeah, you did destroy my point. Good, <laughs> <laughs> good, good. That, that must happen sometimes. The people's party. Right, right. right. But all, I, all I'm saying <laughs> is uh, the ease in which people are able to feel um, satisfied mm -hmm. with their engagement. Um, right. The endorphins it, of, I, I put the Black Lives Matter hashtag and I click like on it and I stopped I Coney today. Something. Right. And it's like the Saturday. Coney. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday Night Live's Coney. Remember that? Yes. That yeah. nigga was running around naked in the street I in know, San Diego. I know. I know. <laughs> he was one of the first casualties of this shit. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, that's, it, it's a mix of both. It's mm -hmm. a microphone. It doesn't overpower the voice. Mm -hmm. This is nothing without a voice. That's right. You know that. I do. Now, um, you are now working with the Bernie Sanders campaign. Yes. Okay. I'm an unpaid volunteer. Unpaid volunteer. I always got to correct when you like kill him. <laughs> you're like killing Mike. Yeah, I'm a believer. Yes. Right. Okay, so. So now. I thought it was going to be. Did that what you said? Wow, son. You win some, you lose some. You're trying to make you're trying to make Fleck happen. You knew the man. Fleck was was it? Fetch. Fetch. I knew it was something. I watched it too. It was a good movie. Trying to make Fetch happen. I love when y'all all watch Mean Girls. All right. Mean Girls. Shout out to Tina Fey. It's a classic film. My theory is is that Tina Fey was actually a Mean Girl. Oh, really? We'll get into that later, though. That's okay. a whole just oh, rabbit hole. Tina Fey is one of my you know, faves. She is. I was on 30 Do you Rock. do After Dark? People's Party After Dark? No, but we should. That's we a good should idea. Do yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It could be like BET <laughs> After Dark, but the People's Party version. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're People's planning. People's After Party. <laughs> yeah. People's After Party. Yeah. Look at that. Marketing geniuses in the back. There you go. Yeah. Um, for once, a Yo, black you're two for three. That's good enough. That's good enough. Yeah. But um, so here's here's the thing. I'm from I'm from Brooklyn, right? Yeah. And just from Brooklyn, <laughs> I like people from right. I stole his idea. And, 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 I, I, I caught that. I'm I not caught white. That. I can't just steal and pretend it's right. mine. I had to tell the right. truth. Right. We the, the white people in the back was like, people. Pe oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I just want my proper credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, IP, um, IP. God damn it, give us something. <laughs> right. Um, but um, I'm, you know, I would say I'm, I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah. I like Bernie because he's from Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, that's not the only thing I like about Bernie Sanders. Yeah, it's a few. I like a lot of things about Bernie Sanders. Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't like everything about Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anyone in the world that I like everything about. Right. Like, I was telling a friend of mine earlier, I was like, when it comes to politics... I like about, I could say maybe I like about 70, 80 percent of Bernie Sanders, what he's saying. Yeah. That's about 20, 30, maybe 40 percent when he says that. I'm like, that's some old white man shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I definitely don't agree with him that. But then when I'm thinking about it, I think about my closest friends that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, some of them niggas is only like 30, 40 percent of what they say that I agree with. Right. Mm -hmm. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. At right. the barbershop. Yeah. yeah. You like, like, really, nigga, nigga, get off Facebook. Stop <laughs> yeah. saying that shit. You're embarrassing right. the crew. You're on YouTube too late yeah, in yeah, the yeah, night, yeah. bro. So, right, right. Stop watching Hotep niggas on YouTube. Like, yeah. you bugging. Yeah. So, so, I say that to say, what is it about Bernie Sanders that you overlap with, that you like, and what is it that you disagree with him about? All right. So, I'm, a, I'm, a na I'm considered a national surrogate for Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. What that means is I represent the campaign when the candidate can't be there or sometime mm -hmm. he, sometimes he is there. 
but I use my gifts, mm -hmm. my connections, mm -hmm. my network to amplify the message of the campaign. Okay. The message of the campaign is not me, us, mm. right? And so what this campaign is about and what attracts me to this campaign, mm -hmm. when, I, when, I, when I came out and said I was endorsing the campaign, I said I'm excited to spend the next 16 months of my life supporting the movement to elect the candidate, Bernie Sanders, Okay. right? Specific, so what that very means, specific language. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what that means is we have the opportunity right now to go around the country and talk to people about the essential crisis that is capitalism. Mm -hmm. That is the reason for the destruction of black people, indigenous people, women, trans people, mm -hmm. gay people, mm -hmm. Latino people, immigrant mm -hmm. people. That's that intersectionality you was talking about. Absolutely. Earlier. Right. It is the reason for all of it. It is the source of racism. It is the accomplice of racism and mm -hmm. sexism. We throw out the words, but when you talk to somebody and say you are depressed and anxious, mm -hmm. it is not because you were born with a chemical imbalance in your head. And I was in pharmaceutical sales. I know mm -hmm. about depression. Okay. Mm -hmm. I sold depression, man. Mm -hmm. It's not because you were born with that. It's because you are alienated from earth, alienated from other people, alienated mm -hmm. from work, alienated from your purpose. Maslow talks about self actualization, you will never get there and you know it. Mm -hmm. And so we have an opportunity to talk about a campaign that wants to end the practice, the most egregious practices of this system that we're all living under, mm -hmm. right? What attracts me to this campaign is we have a candidate who has been consistent. Mm -hmm. This is not a person who I believe to be a liar. Mm -hmm. This is a person who you look today, mm -hmm. you look in them weird grainy videos from the 80s, mm -hmm. you look at black and white videos, mm -hmm. this person has been consistent. Mm -hmm. The same amount of hair, <laughs> right? The same, the same glasses, mm -hmm. right? He has been consistent talking about the issues that are relevant to working people. Who are working people? Black people, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. uh, domestic workers. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Disproportionately. Yeah. And so for me, this is an opportunity to say I've spent the entirety of my political career mm -hmm outside of the system, all air quotes, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't believe in there's an inside, there's a body politic, mm -hmm. right? But I've spent the majority of my career outside of the system. And now I have left my organization and I have an opportunity to contribute my gifts, my talents, my love, my passion into something else. Mm -hmm. why, not, why not do it for a national political campaign? And right. real quick, mm -hmm. and if I had to look back on my life and say I supported a national presidential campaign which for some people is the most icky shit ever. Right. It has to be for someone who is a democratic socialist. Okay. Um, I, I, I think that I'm democratic socialism. I think if you claim to be about what America claims to be about, yes. then democratic socialism is the ideal for you. Mm -hmm. um, you speak a lot about intersectionality. Yes. And as you well know, there are segments of, our, of the black community mm -hmm. that do not appreciate intersectionality, do not like feminism, do not like gay people, uh, work actively against LGBT communities and, mm -hmm. and work actively against feminism. Yep. Um, but you, you push back against all that as yeah. a black man, yeah. right? So Bernie Sanders as a candidate, Again, nobody's perfect. No. Right? We all have, long, especially someone as old as him, yes. we all have long histories right. of mistakes that we've made. Right. Be, but as a politician, because he's chosen political work and chosen to say, vote for me because I represent the people, right. some of his mistakes have been public. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Bernie Sanders often speaks out against identity politics. Right. I feel like you cannot be for intersectionality and also speak out against identity politics. Okay. I feel like that's the part of it, the 20 to 30% that I disagree with right? on Bernie Sanders. Like, I like what he's saying about the working class and about the people and about yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that, I agree with all that. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I like all that. Yeah. But he talks a lot about staying away from identity politics, and that's where the libertarians come in and the Bernie bros mm -hmm. come in. And you know, them folks overlap with white supremacists and Nazis and stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that's where you get the, the problematic with not so much Bernie Sanders, but with, with some of the people that he might enable with his pushback against identity politics. How do you feel about that? So I, I, I can't, I got to keep it 2,000. Mm -hmm. I don't know about his exact quotes about identity politics. Right. but identity I feel like he's against identity. I feel I, like he's against the, 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 the sort of embracing that. Because I think his pr platform is more about class. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think my, first off, I think identity politics, what I know about, mm -hmm. which is a good amount, is it is, a, it is more do. than one thing, right? right? 
there is an identity politics that says I enter into the body politics with all of my many intersexual intersectional identities, mm -hmm. right? I am black, I am male, I am cisgendered, I am heterosexual. Mm -hmm. There are different ways that I, I am uh, masculine presenting, and so there are different ways that I present into the world, mm -hmm. right? That my identity uh, uh, changes the room, mm -hmm. changes the way people react right. to me, changes the way decisions are made right. about me. Regardless and that of what you you're trying to do, it happens. Yes, mm -hmm. you yeah. cannot deny that the way that you are in the in the world, in the Western world, mm -hmm. dictates how you're treated, mm -hmm. how you're Absolutely. legislated, how policies. There is another, what I view as a different form of an identity politic that says, just because you are a certain identity means that you are acceptable. Mm -hmm which says right. that be, just because you are a black man and you are the president of the United States, mm -hmm. that means I should accept part and parcel, carte blanche, everything that you said or done mm -hmm. as, an, as the leader of an empire mm -hmm. who has detonated more bombs, deported mm -hmm. more people, who has rarely ever spoke about being black, mm -hmm. who rarely talks about police brutality, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that is that perversion of identity politics that mm -hmm. says based on your identity, you are able to, to be and be accepted without critique, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the senator stands on it, and mm -hmm. I'll take that as a personal um, challenge to myself to mm -hmm. be better educated on where he stands and his mm -hmm. stances on identity politics. What I will say is this. He is not perfect. Right. I'm not, not none a, of us are. I'm not a stand. I'm not a part of a cult of personality for Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. The campaign and the platform and the policies that he has put forward will do wonders. Mm -hmm wonders for black people, black women, trans people, poor people, oppressed people, Latino people, immigrant people, poor white people in this country mm -hmm. in a way that has never been done and in a way that is not being offered by any other candidate in the democratic field. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. In the next two years, what we, will go, what we are gonna do is take a step forward. It will not be the final step. Mm -hmm. We are creating the conditions by which the seeds that we want to plant, the revolutionary seeds that we want to plant, will somehow be fertile mm -hmm. because we have a candidate who is going to allow those things to flourish and blossom. He's not a panacea for me. He's right. not a king. He's not a champion. That's I, right. I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. I'm actually, I mean, I, I, I was introduced to Bernie um, for my friend Nick Tesla when he ran the last election because he had extra tickets to one of his rallies. And I went and I was like, wow, this guy is a really great speaker. Yeah. And, um, but my only thing is not to be an ageist or whatever, but. Yeah. Um, his health and everything and it's like such a stressful job and it's like he has such good policies was like is he going to be able to last this election process and then like you know four years and then i was thinking i was like you know why wouldn't he get somebody else to just like work through him to, to use his policies that's going to be you know a little bit healthier to be able to follow through on a lot of these things well i think he's animated a lot of younger people aoc myself Mm -hmm. um, Not just AOC, Bill but Han. the whole squad. Yeah, the whole squad, and he's the number one candidate against uh, amongst young people, period. Mm -hmm. So he's animated enough young people who are going to take this thing forward. This is what I'll say about, this is what I'm saying, this is not no talking point shit. Right, right. This person, if you ask anybody who has campaigned on the campaign trail, mm -hmm. opponent, supporter, otherwise, mm -hmm. this person has campaigned harder than anybody else mm -hmm. over the past six years. If we can all agree that a heart condition doesn't, doesn't just start in right. one day. Right. This is a heart condition that develops, right. develops, develops. I, I think, you know, how Bernie Sanders is not that much older than, than Clinton or, or Trump or, or, you know. Listen, Dick Cheney's heart tried to get out of his body at 36. <laughs> it was like, yo, well, Dick know. Cheney's heart is a patriot. Yeah. It, was trying to, <laughs> it was trying to kill this man at, at the age of 36. He doesn't even have a heart anymore. All I'm saying is, I have no concerns about his health, his mental well-being, his physical right. de dexterity. And even more than that, I have no concerns about the over a million people. And I say I'm not a stand. I'm trying to, I'm trying to work in movement. Right. You're talking about strategy and tactics. The, I'm talking about the next 20 years of yeah. our lives. What do the yeah. conditions look like when you have somebody who's, who's in office that wants to stop everything? Mm -hmm. If you have somebody on the Democratic side like a Biden mm -hmm. who's selling people a dream, mm -hmm. right, who's not going to be able to deliver, who mm -hmm. doesn't animate anybody. He has a good chance to win that nomination. That's debatable. Right. Invite me I, back I said in he, February. I, I want to come he back He has here. a good chance. Yeah. He has a good chance. Listen. Bernie Sanders has a great good chance, too. People they both forget, have good chances. People forget that Joe Biden was elected. 
was uh, chosen as vice president because the people who hated Obama loved Joe Biden. No, no doubt. Um, <laughs> so, but here's the thing. So one more, one more, one more Bernie thing. Mm -hmm. um, Bernie Sanders went on a morning show program in the top of 2019, and they asked him about reparations. Yep. And he was like, well, what, is, what does that really mean? What are we really talking about? Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, in the opinion of a lot of people who have been pro-reparation for a long time, he flubbed that one. Mm -hmm. And that was an answer that just he could have did better at. And I personally feel like he should have been more informed about that situation. Since then, um, he has become a co-sponsor on H.R. 40. Right. H.R. 40 is a pro-reparations bill. Mm -hmm. There's a movement called ADOS mm -hmm. that's been very critical of the H.R. 40 bill. I have famously been very critical of ADOS. Right. I'm not a fan. Right. Um, I feel like they're an anti-immigrant, anti-black hate cult that's working for the GOP. Right. Um, but, you know, I don't want to get into that with you. Mm -hmm. um, but since you're a Bernie guy, Bernie is one of their main targets. And from what the, the research I've done with ADOS is, on their website... ADOS101.com, they support a HR40. Mm -hmm. It said HR40 must be passed. It was part of their black agenda. Yes, I right? know. And when Democrats rallied behind HR40, following the lead of Cory Booker, yep. Cory Booker took up that 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 that, that torch, yeah. and he 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 latched on to to HR40, became a co-sponsor. Um, Kamala Harris, which people have problems with, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Warren, the people mm -hmm. have problems with, Tammy Duckworth, mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. basically all the top Democrats running, except for Joe Biden, right. became co-sponsors of H.R. 40. Right. The moment that happened, the founders of ADOS started speaking bad against H.R. 40. Right. I'm of the opinion that they started speaking bad against H.R. 40 because they worked for the GOP and they couldn't be seen agreeing with Democrats on anything. Mm -hmm. um, for a long time, they were speaking bad against H.R. 40, but they still supported H.R. 40 on their website. I called them out for it several times. Right. They actually changed that language. Right. It's not the only time they've changed their language based on me calling them out. Right. I called them out because they had pro Ronald Reagan stuff on their website too. When I called them out for that, all of a sudden it was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Unceremoniously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, gone. no one, no, was no apology, just this shit was gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, well, you know, quality yeah, yeah, quarters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I say all that to say I like the fact that Bernie Sanders is fluid enough because he also was on a tape in 2015 actually speaking against reparations. Mm -hmm. He has changed his position. Mm -hmm. He has gotten more information. Right. You know, and he he has spoken out. He has spoken. He is a co-sponsor of H.R. 40. Um, what do you have to say about people who say that H.R. 40 is just a study and has no teeth. And and because ADOS and people who are sympathetic to their cause say that the Democrats don't really support reparations because HR 40 is 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 a dodge, is what they're calling it now. They have talking points. Right. They call it a dodge. Meanwhile, Trump said, I'm anti reparations. Right. Mitch McConnell said, fuck reparations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We that's done. I ain't do that. Yeah. Like yeah. Bill O'Reilly's like reparations. It's interesting because ADOS is saying we don't mess with white liberals. Right. We don't mess with white progressives. Right. We don't mess with the Democratic Party. But Bill O'Reilly said reparations is a liberal progressive ideal. Mm -hmm. They're willing to align with with the alt right. They're willing to align with neo Nazis. They're willing to align with straight up uh, Republicans and conservatives. But they're attacking the Democrats. What do you have to say to people who say the Democrats is a bait and switch? They're not really about reparations. I don't. I don't. I don't fuck with Democrats. Right. Um, I'm registered independent, As am but I. I had to register Democrat because in Florida you have a closed primary. Right, and you're, so voting, you, you're voting in the primary. I'm voting in the primary. Right. You have to vote in the primary. It's like showing up to the NBA finals without, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Without you, you have to be able to choose who you're gonna get to the to the to the to the general. The right. Yeah. So this is what I'll say. The reason that we require reparate, I support reparations. As Let's talk I. about myself. I'm People's a person, Party supports support reparations. Yeah, I'm a yes. person. I'm a person beyond this, mm -hmm. in the future, in the past, mm -hmm. I've been and will continue to be my own person. <coughs> I support reparations. Mm -hmm. I think black people in this country are the source of all the wealth of the West. Absolutely. Period. We have built great civilizations. That's scientific too. You can look at the data. For Absolutely. That. Yeah. Absolutely. From the soil in the South mm -hmm. to the factories in the North. Mm -hmm to the Great West expansion, mm -hmm. to Europe, to France, to Africa. Mm -hmm. We have built the West. And you're talking about Pan-Africanism. Oh, Pan absolutely, which, like is not, which is not a pillar of everybody. Right. Right. Um, and so what I, I believe that black people should be compensated 
um, for the labor that we have put in, and not just compensation, but there should be elimination of the structural barriers that we have had typically to entering not only into the economy, but into the social um, fabric of a country, mm -hmm. um, into the political fabric of a country. You have to eliminate and untangle all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's what, I, that's what I'll say first. This is what I'll say on the presidential thing. Because I know they actually like a few of the candidates who I won't mention. I don't mm. think they're still in the in the race. Yeah, they're not, they're not right. in the debate. So they're not going to get nominated. No, they're not. And they're probably going to throw their support behind whoever gets the nomination. Yeah. So what I'll say is, if you are caping for a candidate who loves capitalism, mm -hmm. who says that they adore capitalism and that they are a capitalist, mm -hmm. um, but ref but also offers reparations, they are lying to you. That's right. For me, it, for me, the thing is, I don't. Whatever Bernie says, um, he has to own up for what he mm -hmm. says. And I support a good deal of what he says. Mm -hmm. He said, a check is not enough. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to pay us off mm -hmm. a little bit of alimony, mm -hmm. a little child support mm -hmm. for what you have done to our communities for 400, 500 years, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to even just be able to pay off Americans. Mm -hmm for what you have done to South America, the mm -hmm. islands of the Caribbean. You get what I'm saying? Yes. You're, there's no amount of money save giving us all of the land and the wealth of the West that you're going to be able to provide us that will compensate for the great destruction that you have done to people and their mm -hmm. psyche and their generational lineage, right? right. But if you have, I, I want to start at one place. I'm starting at a candidate who believes that capitalism is a source of all evil in this mm -hmm. country and the reason for the desire and the need and the necessity for mm -hmm. reparations. No doubt. And I think if we can start there, then we could build a plan. What HR 40 does is brings together the best minds mm -hmm. of our generation, past, present, international, mm -hmm. together and says, what is the plan for truth and reconciliation mm -hmm. for what this country has done truth to and Africans. reconciliation is very important yes yes to acknowledge the crime the original sin by which this country was birthed mm -hmm. right the rape by which this country was birthed mm -hmm. the bastard through which this country is born mm -hmm. right and you must acknowledge that but before you can acknowledge that you must acknowledge that the reason that you did the sin was because you believed in a system of capitalism mm -hmm. we are not a a, a government that created an economic system. We are an economic system that birthed a government. government that's right. And so if you, I, this, this is a candidate who we have the opportunity for mm -hmm. with work, mm -hmm. through pushing, through teaching, to move forward with a plan of reparations. But until we have a candidate like Bernie Sanders who says that capitalism is the reason, mm -hmm. the indictment, the thing that must be uh, eradicated, mm -hmm. Then, then we can't, this is a non-starter for any of the other right, candidates right. because they love it to their bones. Right. The other thing I'll say is whatever plan comes from the commission that is formed from H.R. 40 mm -hmm. has to have, as I talked about before, fertile ground through which to grow. Mm -hmm. One of the quotes from the Civil Rights Movement, they said, we fought and fought and fought to have a seat at the, at the, at uh, the diner. Table. Right. But then we couldn't afford the burger. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so what we're talking about is there's one fight on this front mm -hmm. and then there is creating the fertile ground to eliminate redlining, eliminate student debt, mm -hmm. eliminate uh, uh, medical debt, mm -hmm. eliminate uh, the war on drugs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, provide access for people who have been in jail for marijuana convictions to get it expunged and then to have access to this new green economy, marijuana mm -hmm. economy that we're talking access about. Access to mental care. And access to mental care access to clean water, food, et cetera. Right. So there is a part where we're talking about to repair the wrongs that have been done. Mm -hmm. And then there is a part that says that once we have repaired the wrongs that have been done, how can I enter into society as a full human being? Mm -hmm. And that is what we have a candidate who is prepared to offer. Last thing I'll say, they asked the Black Panthers, why are you doing free food? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing right. vaccinations? Why are you giving people rides to the jail? And Huey Newton said, these are programs pending revolution. Mm. So what we're talking about is we have a, a platform in the Sanders platform that is a platform pending reparations, mm -hmm. right? That is creating the conditions for whatever comes out of H.R. 40 to then be planted in fertile ground. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is going to work at this point that has been offered. Mm -hmm. I support reparations every single day. No doubt. But it's, it's a complete thing. It's an apology. It's an acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. It's money. It's an undoing of the societal things mm -hmm. that have been put in place. No doubt. Yeah.
I want to um, thank you because um, when I went to Ferguson, I immediately saw that there was a vacuum not being filled. Uh, shout out to Kayla Reed oh, and man. Diamond Lachison and, yeah. and, and, and Tef Poe and Tori Russell. And mm -hmm. they, they showed me on You introduced me to them. And my relationship with them, before you helped me form the Action Support Committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because oh, I man. raised money for Ferguson. And I didn't want to um, mess up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't want them to white clef me, yeah, as, like, yeah. as I say. You know, and so I got <laughs> or one, prize. Or a prize me. And I want them none, none of that. Yeah, yeah. And so Phil, Phil Agnew put me in touch with activists, scholars, revolutionaries, and helped me form a committee so that we could distribute the money properly. And man, shout out to you for your work. Thank this you. is the People's Party. Give yeah. it up to Phil Agnew in the place to be. Yay! I don't know yeah. how you finish that. Oh right? uh, man, it's, hey, you know, we did a lot today.